Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our um, third session today uh, out of eight. We're going through a series of eight weeks, um, and it's a privilege to be here. My name is Isabel Renard Fontaine, and I am a MNRI, a Muscatova Method Specialist and an instructor. I'm also a physical therapist by uh, background. So very warm welcome. And without further delay, I would like to uh, share with you just a couple slides. I promised like uh, last time that uh, this is not the little conventional ways where you have to take notes and study. We're going to move. We are going to move. Um, but I just have to tell you a couple of words. So the uh, program is split in eight sessions and we're going through a protocol of exercise. And it's kind of a story. I was telling this, um, if you had a chance to be here last time, with chapters. First chapter was about imagine being, of course, in a situation of trauma and stress. Um, we are in a react state, like impulsivity reaction, not too much in control of what is going on. So the first step was to get out of this reactive state and go into an action mode. So we had two uh, exercises presented in order to help our body and our mind to get out of this reactive state. Um, today, we're going to the next chapter number two of the story. And this will be about breathing. Uh, so breathing, going back to the uh, development of, of us as a human being is an automatic respira respiration process that is applicable to all beings on this world. This is what keeps us alive and it will guarantee a proper functioning of all the systems of our organisms. So it is not just about breathing because as we're gonna see, the breathing is completely linked to all the other systems in our human body. So breathing needs to function in order to support the other systems. Breathing is really what allows us to take the oxygen from the air will filter and transfer this into the bloodstream so it can be properly distributed uh, throughout the body. Breathing is also what regulates the natural process of protection and survival. And this is where we're linking the breathing with our topic, which is about trauma, protection, and surviving. But just before we go into the actual exercise and a little bit more of explanation, where does that all start? And I just uh, love this graphic picture. This is a beautiful moment that most, I mean, all of us um, must have gone through the, the first second of life on earth at the moment of delivery. And there is a big process that is happening at that moment of transition from the in utero time to the outside under completely different conditions. In utero, we are in the amniotic fluids, aquatic environments where the rules and the laws are different. And all of a sudden, those little babies are pushed out or taken out and they are finding themselves under gravity with a different air, different um, system, and big difference transition, the breathing up to that point. They were relying on the umbilical cord and getting everything from their mother. So at that moment, like what this picture is reflecting, the very first breath will occur. The baby is gonna go in a big inhale, and this will open up the lungs for the very first time. And that will constitute of the inhalation. But that comes with a very specific movement in the body. 
at that moment, it's kind of a chaotic period. Of, oh, what is going on? I have to breathe. Everything is a first time. And to recover from this chaotic moment, the next step is the flexion of the body with the very first exhale. There is even a third step to this uh, called moral reflex. So I do not want to go in detail about the moral reflex because guess what? This will be for next week. It is part of our program and it is in this protocol, moral reflex. It's such huge importance. But I had to mention this because this reflex in every single human being born on this planet is going through the more reflex in order to open up the breathing system. And this is what we want to talk about today. So I'm going back there, like I had explained it last time, not in a sense that we need to revert to the first stage of life, but because Dr. Maskutova's concept completely relies on the time where all the reflexes that are given by nature for protection and survival are the most effective and the most expressed because as newborns, we have the, this is the only way to survive and thrive and protect ourselves. So that explains why in all her method, and for instance, this protocol of exercise, she invites us to move, but every single movement is not just a random movement. It has a deep developmental meaning into it. And when we're gonna go today, moving um, for breathing to try to turn it on or to restore a proper breathing, this is where um, it has been taken and the rational under um, those kinds of movements. All right, so very briefly, and again, that's just to give you, I have two more slides and then we will be moving, but, Dr. Mesgutova describes the breathing, the natural breathing as an automatic response. And in case of trauma and protection and survival, we are moving our brain function into the automaticity system. This is created in order to come and help uh, in an urgency, in an emergency situation of trauma. What we don't want, we want this kind of state of automaticity to be prolonged unnecessarily when the trauma is gone or if the trauma will be there and persisting, then the body needs to adjust and, don't, and not having this primary reactive impulsive response, but learn how to cope with it if this traumatic event or if this feeling of tragedy, tragedy or trauma will persist. So three types of breathing. We all know that it is a matter of balancing between inhale, exhale. Every time we inhale, the next step will be exhaling. And after exhaling, we need to inhale again to keep going. So this is the goal for all of us to have a nice, well regulated cycle of inhale exhale. Now there is two other patterns of breathing that Dr. Maskutova is, is describing. It's the inhale and hold and the exhale and hold. And those two other patterns are also very naturally happening. And they're meant and designed by genetic, by nature to adjust. So if we have a uh, status of discomfort, stress, trauma, a panic attack, a danger, automatically the tendency will be to inhale and hold. Imagine you're walking on and you hear this huge sound. You can go into the freezing response and say, oh, what was that? You're going to inhale and hold in order to pause and try to process it. Say, okay, what, what was that? Do I need to run? Do I? This is meant to save us, what we don't want. So it is still natural, but what we don't want, we want to stay in this inhale and hold. So in that case, when we inhale and hold, we are withdrawing the core and it creates some compression inside our, our chest. There is nothing good about staying with this inner pressure. So the exercise will be 
meant to prevent from staying in that inhale, uh, inhale and hold. Then you have another possibility of response to stress would be the exhale and then hold. And you are exhaling and you're tired. <sighs> and you just don't even have the courage to take the next breath. This would be more um, according to a state of depression, lack of motivation, sadness, being like really uh, affected by the stress um, or the trauma. So again, it can happen if you are going, going, going on and on. You have tons of things to do. At one point, you're sitting down. You're taking this big exhale and hold for a brief moment and you keep on. This is normal, natural way to use those packs. Okay, so that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you. Three types of natural breathing pattern. The inhale and hold, the exhale and hold, and the natural cycle, inhale, exhale. So why am I telling you this? To, um, to make sense of the exercise that we are going to cover today and to explain where those exercises are taken from. At some point, we're going to go with a big inhale and hold and then we're gonna go for the exhale and so on. So all those uh, protocols of breathing exercise are based on the natural uh, development of the breathing. All right, so when we do those exercises that you are about to discover, we are working with breathing reflex. This is clear. This is the essence of Dr. Maskutova's um, method. Keeping in mind that breathing is, of course, the priority number one. We cannot stay alive without breathing, but it's targeting the strengthening not only of the lungs, but also on, of the muscles that are supporting the whole pulmonary function. So we're going to have two goals when we do those exercises. Make our lungs stronger and our muscles stronger. Okay, so we know breathing is vital. It is about strength. Um, and we're going to work a lot. You're going to hear me say, okay, now go move further in order to increase your residual lung volumes. Okay, so I just have to tell you what this residual lung volume is. Why? Because the research and studies on trauma, when you face a threat, when you're in a panic attack, when you're in depression, when you're suffering from any type of mental health condition, what we discovered is that this residual lung volume is decreased and significantly um, reduced, impacted. So when we do the exercise, it's a major goal for us to increase. And what is this? If you take a breath in, and you can do this with me, take the breath in, and now you exhale as much as you can. Try to empty your lungs, and then you cannot go any longer. Well, now you can breathe. You will never exhale everything because after you feel you've exhaled, pushed as hard as you can, you will still have a little bit of air in your lungs. I mean, you should. And this is what we call the residual lung volumes, the residual volume of the lungs. This is necessary, it's vital. If we don't have this amount of air staying there, what will happen? The lungs will collapse and then may not reopen. So very, very crucial to take care of our residual volumes of the lungs. That's what I wanted to um, tell you about, okay? And one more slide, when we are going to go through those breathing exercises. Sure, it is to improve our breathing system. But like I was telling you in my first sentence, the breathing is linked to pretty much every other systems of the body. And what is that? It's muscle, ligament, and tendon. All right, so let's do this together. You have your hands together. I want you to press your hands as hard as you can, one against the other. And I'm not giving any more instructions. Go ahead and press, press like 100% of your strength. You go, you go, you. And you relax. 
I think I can be confident and say that most of you were holding your breath as you did this. Okay, so holding our breath will have an impact on the muscle strength. Now let's do the same exercise. And we're gonna go with 50% of our strength, 50%. Here we go, hands together, breathe in, and you press 50%. One, two, four, seven seconds, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, note the difference between your 100% and 50. Maybe you did not hold your breath as much. You kind of let it go still. You were contracting, and it's not just your hands contracting. Maybe your toes were <laughs> cleaning too. All right, now let's do this with 20%. 20% and we're going to do a beautiful, slow, gradual exhale at the same time, at least for seven seconds. Here we go. Put your hands together. Breathe in. And press 20% as you are exhaling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let go. So I'm hoping that you felt this experience as when you went with 20% and a nice exhale. Everything was more relaxed in your body with less tension in your muscles. So just trying to illustrate how the breathing is so linked to the muscle and muscular tendon systems. With the circulation, we all know that breathing will bring the oxygen in the blood, cardiopulmonary. It's link, breathing is linked to the immune system. The better you breathe, the stronger your immune system will be. And then, of course, the last but not least, it is totally linked to the uh, stress hormone response. That's what we are very much interested in as far as the purpose of this presentation. It has to do with the HPA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenaline circle, if you have this uh, kind of background information, but it's a series of hormonal response that one triggers the other and that deal with coping with stress mechanisms. All right, enough of the theory uh, part right now. Um, I hope I give you the main element that will give some good sense to um, the exercise that we're about to do here. We're going to do the exercise in a standing position for now. Everything that we do in standing can absolutely be done in a sitting position if standing is not a possibility for yourself or for the type of uh, client people that you are trying to help. Uh, maybe I will demonstrate one or two exercises also in sitting so you know. And we can also do those exercises in a uh, laying down position as well. I'm a pediatric physical therapist and I even work uh, in the neonatal unit. Now, talking about surviving and breathing, the babies that are born too soon, the biggest challenge for the premature babies is to uh, support the breathing and the respiratory function. Most of them end up on a ventilator at the beginning, depending on how primitive. So the breathing and all we do here, it's fundamental to help those premature babies to cope with the stress. And if it's not properly supported, any babies that go through a hospitalization in the neonatal intensive care unit, and then later in life, if you've been hospitalized, if at one point you ended up or anyone that you're working with ended up in an intensive care unit on a breathing support. This is where this um, exercise and the whole protocol is taking the greatest value because the breathing was mainly disrupted or even at the beginning was never uh, putting in place. So um, that's the whole benefit of the exercise. Okay. Let's stand up, and like we did last time, when we stand up, we need a good base of support. The feet are always spread the width of your shoulders because we need to be stable. If you stand right there, immediately your breathing is going to have to do something because you're going to have to expend energy to get your back. So we want a nice, steady position. And we're going to work first with the inhale hold. All right, 
So what I think is brilliant with this type of exercise, we're not just gonna inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. We're gonna add our body biomechanic to be coherent with what the lungs are doing. So when we inhale, what happens? The lungs are expanding and the rib cage is moving in a wider and longer position. So as we inhale, we're gonna go in this expanding position and we could just stand up straight, but here we're going with the lateral flexion of your body. So as you're bending to the side, you're going to expand at least one side of your rib cage and support the inhale. Here is how it goes. We're gonna take a big deep breath in through the nose, a big deep breath out through the mouth, and the next inhale through the nose, we are going with flexion of the body to the side. Inhale, then we hold, and we're gonna twist, rotate, and go with exhale with a circular movement. So what did we do? We did the inhale hold pattern. Let's do this on the other side together. Because we're gonna go on inhale, we need to inhale exhale first to make sure that our inhale will be deep and powerful. So just inhale exhale first. Here we go. Breathe in, breathe out. And here we go. We go with inhale as you're leaning to the side and you hold, hold it, turn your body. And now we have no choice and we go with exhale. Okay, beautiful. Let's do this again to the other side. We are going to go deeper and stronger. So we're gonna inhale, 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 hold, and then we go with a big exhale. So it is, it's called forced inhale that will cause the forced exhale. Forced not in a bad meaning because no one is forcing. It's our brain that stays in control and is doing this. Here we go. Inhale, exhale first. Breathe in. Breathe out. And here we go. Inhale, 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 more, 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 like a uh, hold, and we go. <sighs> Exhale. Did you feel this? Like you were inhale and take more air, more air, more air, more air, and then you have no choice. You gotta let it go. So we are causing a good, nice exhale afterwards. Other side, breathing. Breathe out, inhale, and more, more, feel those legs, even more. Can you push for more air? Hold, rotate your body, and let go. Okay, so this was about inhale and hold. Let's do the same um, type of movement on exhale. And Listen to what is going on to your body this time. So for this uh, exercise, all we have to do is to take a deep, big inhale. And as we're leaning to the side, we're gonna go with an exhale. We're taking the inhale through the nose and we are exhaling through the mouth. For the first one here, we're gonna uh, inhale, through uh, the nose, and we're gonna exhale also through the nose until you lean. And then when you finish with the circular, you're gonna switch to the exhale through the mouth. <laughs> okay, did you follow me? I will verbalize this. Take a big deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose as you're leaning. If you have enough, keep exhaling. If you're all the way exhaling, you can breathe in again and go with the exhale. Okay, other side, take a big deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. 
If you have enough, you keep exhaling. If not, you have to take another breath in to finish. So what is interesting, as far as I am concerned, I don't have enough to exhale all the way through the time I'm bending in and continue. I'm, I'm not having a good long exhale. This is a reflection of some post-traumatic status of my breathing. If you have no problem <laughs> exhaling, you still have enough here, that means you had more volume in your lungs. So you're in a good shape in order to do this. And you remember where you are. And the more you do the exercise, the better you will measure your progress. Okay, let's do this this time with the exhale, 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 exhale. So every increment, we go further, further, further. You're gonna exhale further through the nose. Once you reach here, you switch and you continue your exhale through the mouth. All right. Here we go. Take a big deep breath in first. And the deeper you take your breath, the better you're going to be able to exhale. But it's about exhaling a little uh, portion of air at a time in order to last. Okay, here we go. Deep, big breath in. Exhale through the nose. Little by little. More if you have enough. Keep exhaling through the mouth. If not, you took a little breath in, in the middle. Same thing, other side, let's stay symmetrical. Take a big deep breath in. Nose here, exhale through the nose. Keep exhaling through the mouth. So very different. When we work on the inhale hold, it is more addressing a chronic state of stress, a panic attack, um, like immediate uh, threat or anxiety. When we work with exhale, it is more for the post traumatic. Okay, now another very interesting uh, component of those exercises. Um, we do what we call a differentiating breathing. So yes, we have one nose, but we have two lungs, but we have two nostrils. So Dr. Mazgatova did her research and realized that if we were breathing through one nostril, that would bring another set of very interesting variation of working the strength of your lungs, the strength of your muscles. Okay, let's um, do this together. We're gonna do this with inhale pattern again. So we did inhale, we did exhale, back to the inhale hold pattern. We are going to lean, let's all do it together so I can refer. We're gonna to lean to our right side, okay? When you lean to the right, the left lung is expanding, you agree? Okay, so when we're gonna take the air in, we're gonna take the air through the left nostril. That way it's gonna move right to the left lung, which is going with the expansion. How do we take air through one nostril? We're gonna close the other one, okay? So we're gonna breathe in, breathe out, close the nostril on the opposite side of the raised arm and inhale through that one open nostril there. Then you let go your nose, here we go with the exhale. Okay, let's feel the differentiated breathing. Here we go, we're all going to the right side. Take a big deep breath in, a breath out. Close the right nostril, lift the left arm, and big deep inhale. Take as much as you can, hold. Let go your nose, rotate your body, and exhale through the mouth. Wow. So the difference when we do, let's do the other side to not stay uneven here. Inhale. Exhale. Close the opposite nostril of the raised arm. Deep inhale. 
and lean to your left. Inhale as much as you can. Increase that residual volume. Rotate the body and let go. So when we inhale through one nostril, this is for strengthening. You know, when you go through a smaller diameter, it just increases the, the strengthening power of the exercise. It is also in order to teach our breathing system to be economical, to, to save, not to just let go everything in case we're in need for the reserved air. Um, and we have to grade this properly according to the situation we are in. Let's do this again. And this time we're gonna do inhale, 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 like the um, incremental inhale. Every time you're like, oh, I'm full. No, I'm gonna take a bit more. Oh, I'm so full. No, I have just a little bit more room for more. So you are training your lungs to say, hey, don't be so rigid, be more flexible. The more flexible, the better reserve and the better resilience you will uh, develop. Here we go, breathe in, breathe out. Close opposite nostril, inhale deep through that one. Inhale, inhale. If you can put a bit more, then you rotate and ah, that nice exhale. And again, it is not random. Why do we do this type of circular movement? Do you feel what muscles is engaged as you do this type of movement? Like you're going with the lower muscles, you're going with the side muscles, you're going with the diaphragm for sure. It's a big main muscle for inhale. Uh, so, and you're changing all the direction. What does that do? It is activating the different level of your lungs. We have lower lung breathing, medium breathing, upper breathing, all those um, very specific targets. Now imagine a patient with uh, lung cancer, if we know where the cancer is, if we know where, what area of the brain needs to be more targeted, there is a coherence with the type of muscles that are activating, activated. Okay, now we're gonna do this um, on exhale horde tag. All right, so same principle, differentiating, but think about that now. If we lean to the left, all of us, let's lean to the left. It is the left lungs that becomes compressed. This is going um, logically with exhale. As you exhale, you're getting the air out and you're compressing. So when we do on exhale this time, we're gonna exhale through the, the nostril on the side that we are compressing. What does that mean? That we're gonna to have to close the nostril, this time on the side of the raised arm. Okay, <laughs> so if you still follow me, I know like I have a little bit of dyslexia and it's like, okay, right side, next time, leaning to the left, close the right, trying to maybe visually follow. Okay, here we go, we have to breathe in deep. And remember this time we're gonna exhale as we're leaning to the side and I'm gonna close the nostril on the side of my raised arm. Take a big deep breath in. Close the same side of your arms and exhale through that one nostril, long exhale. Oh boy, if you feel short, now you take another little inhale, let go the nose, and here you go with that nice long exhale with a Beautiful circular movement. And as we're repeating, we may have more amplitude, more mobilization of our breathing muscles. Same on the other side. Take a big deep breath in. Close the same side of the raised arm and exhale, long exhale. Get the air out, get it out as this is shortening and compressing. Rotate your body if you need, inhale again, and big exhale there. All right, inhale, exhale, one nostril, 
Okay, let's do the same thing with exhale, 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 exhale. All right, but still, we're gonna close the, um, sorry, the nostril on the side of the raised arm. Here we go, take a big deep breath in. Same side, exhale, exhale, exhale. Rotate your body. If you need to breathe in again and there. And let's make it even on the other side. Take a big deep, sorry, big deep breath in. Close the same side of the raised arm and exhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale again if needed and there. All right. Whew. You know, we're talking, we're doing, I hope you can uh, do this along. We're getting very significant work to the lungs. If you're able to follow, you're going to feel, you, you have to feel something. And if it is about you who really decided to move out of the impulsive state, go in action and turn on your breathing, this will work, you, you will feel it. And it might be difficult. You might feel the, <gasps> this inner pressure where we stop breathing because of anything that's happening and stressing us. So we have to push it through and go back and say, hey brain, just go back to that stage where the cycle of inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale with the right amount, with the right rhythm was natural. And this is what we're trying to do with those techniques of forced inhale to cause exhale, forced exhale to cause the forced inhale, holding and pause and holding and pause. Okay, let me check <laughs> the time. Yes, it is about uh, time to go. So I will go with this last um, exercise here. We're going to do this on the inhale, more on the post, um, I'm sorry, the acute step. We're gonna inhale, you can go with me, and then we're gonna do what we know, exhale. Exhale, you're gonna rotate, and here, this hand is gonna meet the other hand. You're gonna press together, and you're gonna push one against the other. And then inhale again, and you're gonna go 360 degrees around, and finish at the center. And rest. Okay, let's do that on the other side. We're putting all the elements together here. All right, big deep breath in. With your fist on exhale. Exhale as long as you can. Rotate your body, meet your palm. You press and you hold that pressure. It has to be 20%. You keep the pressure the whole 360 degrees. On exhale, back to the center, and relax. Here we go. That is it. I think this is it for the purpose of this uh, session. The Maskutova method has a whole protocol on breathing. So this is a little appetizer, but it is also the piece. Remember the whole story that we're going through for those eight weeks, this is week three. This was the piece of breathing. Now the whole post-traumatic um, protocol, stress resilience, the power of this one is that we have pieces of a bit of every program, stress resilience, immunity, breathing, and putting them together makes the effectiveness of the whole protocol. We can think differently. We could say, okay, now I really want to put my focus on breathing, which of course is um, acting on the stress uh, resilience and the coping mechanisms. And then you would just do the exercise from the breathing protocol. All right, so whew, you see, it's, it's amazing because just to tell you about, I am from an athletic background. I've done a lot of triathlon, I run, I bike, I swim. And I thought for the longest time, 
well, if you're not out there and you don't do your 10K and you don't swim your 100 laps, forget about it. This, and being in this work and those exercise made me discover that it's not always about this, oh, no pain, no gain, oh, no. And I explain this now by experimenting this with me and studying with Dr. Mesgutova for so long that because those movements are going so deep in their origin, it's just nothing is random with those kind of movements. They just go back and go inside our circuits, neuro uh, sensory motor circuits and say, hey brain, remember when you were born, those circuits were there and you just go and activate those. And it makes it powerful because when we all of us were that brand new born baby, just a few minutes in on earth, those reflexes were in all of us, sometimes with some disruptions during pregnancy, during birth, sure, but it was there and it needed to be activated. And it was so powerful that we all survived <laughs> and stayed protected until this moment where we are together. All right. So this is um, what I wanted to present to you. Back to Pat, if you hear, um, yes. I would be very happy to, yes, to answer some of your questions. Um, how can we learn more on this breathing protocol for PST, PS, uh, PTSD? PTSD. How would we learn more about it? Um, okay, so that would be, I'm talking about what Dr. Mosgutova offers, the Mosgutova method. Um, we have websites and a lot of information online. Um, I don't know if uh, it is okay to um, send the website maybe later yes. or, but that would be the, the, the kind of information. We have videos put on, we do sessions of exercise. We uh, do all sorts of things about these programs. Yeah. Yeah, somebody wants to put that link in the chat. That's you're more than welcome to. Okay, maybe um, Rebecca will if she, she Rebecca, has a really answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if she can. Uh, let me look to see if there's any others. That's the only question I see right now. Maybe somebody else could ask one. Actually, I see one question. So Carrie says, I'm recovering from COVID months later, and this is really helpful. Okay, that was not a question. But thank you, Carrie, for sharing this comment. So it is, um, it was one of the big focus of uh, Dr. Maskotova's program for sure. It's the actuality. And she has been extremely successful with COVID-19 recovery. And there is a COVID-19 breathing challenges, trauma recovery protocol where she really targets all what's difficult because for people uh, that suffered from COVID just this type of movement, just lifting an arm could have been extremely painful, uncomfortable, challenging. And it's because nothing was moving and it really takes time to re-engage and reopen the breathing process. But thank you uh, for sharing this. It should be uh, I have very helpful. More in yeah. here. Um, I'll, I'll start with the first one. If one nostril is always blocked, how can you work on this? Okay, so it means, uh, I guess, like something like chronic congestion of the nostril. Uh, this is how I understand the question. Uh, so you, you will start with the well-functioning, properly functioning nostrils first, and then start um, switching. Maybe as you're going to add the biomechanic aspect, the movement, one will support the other. Now, I of course, I don't know the structure, like if there is a, a well-identified uh, structural issue or anything like that, but those exercises should really help. Um, Can these exercises restore. help with, yeah. with long COVID or with asthma? Sure, any type of breathing condition, uh, this, is, this will be helpful because it all comes back to restoring the natural cycle of inhale, exhale, the breathing respiratory function um, element of the body. So any type, but really the trauma uh, is our big uh, how often, focus here. Yeah. How often would you recommend doing these exercises? They can be done very safely daily. This is like a daily routine. You don't have to, to do 100%. The principle is to stay safe, listen to your body 
and you go according to your physical ability, which every time it's just a little bit of a pushing yourself, but very within the safe. Nothing should uh, be uh, really uncomfortable. So daily, even if you do a few repetitions every day, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, I personally do those every day, one hour, and I also present uh, every week a good hour, but it is very individually um, set, the amount and the frequency. Um, here's a good one. I, I think I have been having very shallow breathing since a recent trauma. Uh, would these exercises help me? Is there any other wisdom? With, uh... Yes, yes, absolutely. Because like also, I this is also what I'm seeing. Somebody says, my trauma is stuck in my chest. This is about breathing, but also the whole biomechanics around. And if you sit in front of someone and you keep saying, you need to breathe, breathe deep, try to breathe and, and go trying to reach the cortical level of the brain by cognitively teaching someone to breathe, it is not going to happen. The breathing centers are in the brain stem. This is at a way deeper level. So this is why we do this with movement and action. It doesn't mean that you have to go all the way there. I work in the neonatal care unit with little babies. They're on their side and I bring the arms slowly up and I see they're all hooked on a monitor. It's the most beautiful thing. This is, I'm keeping bringing the NICU because they're teaching me the best, but I see the heart rate. I see the oxygen saturation. I see the respiratory rate changing as I'm gently opening the rib cage. This is through movement. That's the uh, only effective way to restore the breathing. And it's um, so true when we say it's so heavy on my chest. <laughs> this is because of <gasps> I cannot breathe. This is maybe a follow-up to that. Um, how, how would you do this on babies? Someone is asking. Uh, how? Okay. I wish I had my baby doll here. So I would put the baby side lying, on, laying on the side. Babies like this, comfortable, and very gently start to mobilize the arm or we have techniques i mean it's difficult to do this in 10 seconds on the screen but we go and we are doing some rib work we work with the diaphragm we have a very technique that you can really uh, try if you just here and you press and quick release here like you pushing and when you relax it forces the exhale so we do that kind of, of technique we have hundreds of techniques for breathing that we do, whether from zero to 120 years old, the principle is the same according to any type of independence level, whether it's completely passive, passive assisted, assisting, you're doing it for the person, the person does it for herself independently. Um, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, will this help get more air in my lungs and do you need to do all of these combinations every time? Uh, yes, yeah, it will be. Um, really, it depends. You can try to do all combination and have the oval effect of the techniques, or if you have one specific goal, I want to increase this residual volume of the lung, you will focus then and do more repetition on the <gasps> inhale hold. And then you let go and inhale. It's it's really uh, according to your intention. Okay, I think that's good. That's the last one. Um, so if you want to say goodbye, and oh, we'll God. know what's what's the plan for next week. Okay. Yes. So it was a great honor. I I'm loving <laughs> to be there. If anyone uh, tells that it's helping, this is a win uh, situation. Next week. Week number four, we're continuing the story. And uh, this will be about the moral reflex. Oops, if I remember right. <laughs> I Sorry, I forgot what the fourth step is with the order. But anyway, same thing on Tuesday. You're coming back and we're going to go all the way. And the eighth week, the last one, it will be about putting the seven previous exercise all together. And the idea will be to do the whole protocol together. So it's good to come and if 
you were not able to come. Of course, you're the one that are here, but all the recordings, I believe, are available on the um, Trauma Research uh, Foundation website. So I really invite you, you tell other people to come and you will experiment something very um, beneficial and unique on that last day. So stay tuned and we will see you next Tuesday. And Pat, thank you so much for hosting um, this beautiful event. It's a great- You're welcome. Thank you so much as well. And I put the link in the chat there just so people can uh, find the previous sessions. All right. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.